Hi, I'm Mike Robichaud, Head of Guitar Repairs for Long & McQuaid, and I'm going to show you how to change a string on a mandolin. So, the first step is to remove the tailpiece cover, if your tailpiece has a cover. Some modern mandolins don't have a cover, but a lot of traditional ones do. So, this plate is just press fit on there, and it slides off towards the back. So, you can just hold the mandolin firmly and push it off with your thumbs. If it's a little hard on your thumbs, you can use a polishing cloth to cushion it a bit and just push off and it'll slide off the back. Once it's almost off, you can grab it from the bottom and pull it all the way off like that. The cover is just decorative. Uh, you can leave it off if uh, you prefer not to have to deal with it every time. The next step is to remove the old string. So we're going to start by winding the tension off. You never want to cut a string under tension. You can if you loosen it up enough, you can actually just unhook it from the tailpiece, or you can cut the string. Loosen it up like that, and just take the loop end off, and then detach it from the headstock. Now, mandolins have a floating bridge. So this bridge here is not connected to the guitar in any way. The only thing holding it on is string tension. It's like a violin bridge. So if we take all eight strings off at once, the bridge is just going to fall off and you're going to have a hard time getting it back in exactly the right place. So unless you know how to set up your mandolin, this is the first time that you're changing strings, I highly recommend you just do them one at a time. That way the string tension always keeps it in place and you don't have to worry about moving your bridge around. So now, the old string removed, take out our new strings, they generally come wrapped in pairs, so most mandolins take loop end strings, there's no ball end like you'll see on a guitar string, this is a much older more traditional style of string, it's just a loop at the end and it just hooks onto the appropriate hook in the tailpiece. I want to briefly mention these extra little hooks here that you'll see on some mandolins, especially uh, older or vintage style mandolins. What these are for is for the plain strings, uh, the, the first four strings. The idea is that the loop end hooks onto them and then actually takes a right angle before it leaves the tailpiece and goes out over the bridge. So you actually hook the strings on here and they go out and take a, a right angle around the uh, the other hooks. And you can see that this mandolin is not strung that way. They're just using these uh, these hooks and going straight off. So these hooks here are more of a traditional kind of vintage feature. Uh, they were there to deal with uh, issues with string winding that used to be a problem about a hundred years ago. The windings on these strings were not very stable. They would come unwound. The mandolin would go at a tune. And this right angle setup helped to prevent that on the plain strings. But String manufacturing's come a long way, and that's no longer an issue. So modern mandolins, you're starting to see these, uh, these hooks. They don't even put them in anymore, and you certainly don't need to use them. It really just complicates the process. So you can use them if you want, but unless you're using 100-year-old strings, it's not really necessary. All right. So with that in place, we're going to come up to the headstock. Now, there are several ways to attach strings at the headstock, and they all have their advantages. I'm just going to show you the absolute simplest way to do this to make it easy. So line up the post so you can pass the string straight through. So before we start winding, we have to measure out the appropriate amount of slack. On the treble strings, we want it to go around the post four or five times. On the bass strings, we want it to go around two or three times. Now you've got to keep tension on the string while you do this because if you let it go loose it'll come unhooked down at the tailpiece. You want to hold the string with your pinky and ring finger and control it and keep it down with your, your index finger and that'll allow you to keep some tension on the tailpiece while still having some slack in it. So with the string firmly under your control, with your index finger at the nut, you want to measure back about two and a half, three frets and that'll give you the appropriate amount of uh, slack for four or five windings around the post for a treble string. If you're doing one of the bass strings, you would just go back about two frets, and that would give you enough slack for two or three windings. So, with the right amount of slack measured out, we're going to start winding up the string. As you wind, it's going to kink itself. 
you want to make sure that this tail is on top. So as you wind, all of your windings should be going down with the tail out on top. Everything should wind down towards the peg head. And all of the windings should stack nicely, one below the other. No overlapping, no loose loops. So I got about four windings on there. It's starting to get tight, so place it in the nut slot and the saddle slot. Bring it up to tension. You can give it a gentle little stretch away from the body. That'll help it stabilize tuning a little quicker. And then with the string nice and, nice and tight, you can clip off the tail, leave a millimeter or two there, and you can bend that up to get it out of the way. You can reinstall your tailpiece, just sliding it back on, and you're ready to go. So once again, I'm Mike Robichaux for Long & McQuaid. Thanks for watching. <laughs>